What's up, future respiratory therapist? Man, one of my favorite things to do is to dissect pra practice exam questions. That's exactly what we're doing today. Let's dive in. All right, so here we go. January 2021, many of you are just months away from graduating. You're starting to prepare for your TMC exam. And one of the key elements to being successful on your TMC exam is obviously knowing and having the knowledge base that you need to function and pass an exam over respiratory therapy, but also to have the test taking skills to be able to dissect a question such as this. Okay, now we're going to break this down. If you want to pause this video and answer this question by itself, I'll get out the way here so you can see all the answers. Pause it, work through it yourself, see what you get, and then come back and finish the video. I'm going to go ahead and jump on in to dissecting this monster of a question. And this is something you're going to find. There's always a lot of information. Some of them are straight to the point. Some of them have a lot of information such as this. Some of the information in this question isn't even needed. It's just supporting information that doesn't help you answer the question. So this looks like a hard question, a lot of information. It's really not, and I'm gonna show you how. So let's break this down. We got a 24-year-old woman. She presents to the ICU with ARDS. This is caused by urosepsis. She's intubated. She started on mechanical ventilation. She's sedated and paralyzed, and they put the patient on the ventilator settings as follows. Pressure control, IRV. Inspiratory pressure of 25. Peep, eight simmers of water pressure. That gives us a pip of 33 simmers of water pressure with a plateau of 33 simmers of water pressure. An exhale tidal volume of 350, a rate of 15. I time is set at 2.5 seconds. FIL2, 80%. SATs, 92%. Now, 30 minutes after this, the patient becomes hypotensive. They begin to desaturate. And you have decreased breath sounds over the left lung. We get a chest x-ray. It shows that we have a left pneumothorax. What changes in the ventilator parameters do you expect to find at this time? That is the most important part of this question. Why? Because that is the question. One of the key things I see students do too many times is that you're reading through this question and you think you know what the question is going to ask you. And so you start putting your mind frame into to other um, elements or into other categories that aren't needed to answer the question when you finally find out what is it that they're asking of me. So I tell students to be aware of red flags as you're going along and reading through the questions, make note of things, but always get to what the question is fairly early in the process so you can answer the right question, okay? So the question is, is what changes, what ventilator parameters do you expect to find at this time? Well, let's go back and break this question down. Let's just talk about some things. First of all, patient goes to ICU, they're in ARDS caused by urosepsis. ARDS, somewhat important because it's probably going to tell us we're going to have a poor compliance, probably going to have a terrible PF ratio, and uh, probably going to be in some mode other than volume control unless we're following the ARDSnet protocol. So let's just see what happens here. We get started on mechanical ventilation, we are sedated and then paralyzed. That's important. I'm going to circle it and I'm going to come back and tell you why that is important in just a second. They put it on these settings. PCIRV. This right here is extremely important. That is the most, this is the most important aspect of answering this question correctly is recognizing that you're in pressure control. Now the IRV, it's important. But it's really probably just there to throw you off. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not familiar with IRV. I've never seen IRV. Maybe I've never heard of IRV. IRV stands for inverse ratio ventilation. That means we have a person with a longer inspiratory time than we do expiratory time. In other words, an inverse I to E ratio. It's a distractor. If you don't know what it is, you're going to panic like, oh my gosh, what is IRV? Is that like PRVC or is that like ASV or what is it? No, it's just telling you you're in pressure control with an inverse I to E ratio, okay? You're set with an inspiratory pressure of 25 and you're on a peep of eight. You add those two together and magically you get your peak inspiratory pressure, which is how pressure control works. You start at a baseline peep, you add an inspiratory pressure, you add them together and that should be your peak inspiratory pressure. That will also be your plateau pressure which they add in here only to throw you off. You know in pressure control that your plateau is going to be the same as your PIP. 
It's going to be because that's the definition of a plateau pressure. Plateau pressure, you know and I know that we assess plateau pressure by doing an inspiratory hold and seeing where the pressure falls to when we cease flow. Well, in volume control, yeah, we get a drop in pressure because pressure varies. But in pressure control, we're controlling pressure. So the vent says, yeah, you can hold my inspiratory phase. I'll hold it at 35, 33 all day long. So your plateau pressure is going to be reflective and the same as your peak inspiratory pressure. Not a shot. It's a distractor. It's going to try to make you think something here in a little bit to throw you off. We're getting back tidal volumes of 350. This is important because as it stands right now, we have a pip of 33 and we're getting back 350. Very important. Your rate of 15 is what we're set on. You have an I time of two and a half seconds, FI2 of 80% and a SAT of 92%. I can tell you right now that none of this matters in answering this question correctly. Sure, you wanna do a case study over it? By all means, we should probably talk about that stuff. But to answer this question, which is what expected changes do you think you're going to find when this pneumothorax happened? Though that line right there doesn't help us answer this question at all, okay? You'll see why here in just a second. Now, if you were like me, I told you not to read ahead and not to assume what the question is going to ask you, okay? Now, I give that advice because I know that's what I do. So when I was reading this question, I read this and went 30 minutes later, she becomes hypotensive. And I said, oh, ARDS, we're in inverse ratio ventilation. See, that's why I thought they were telling me that we were in inverse ratio ventilation is because I thought that was going to be causing decreased venous return and causing our patient to be hypotensive. But I kept reading, and this is why you have to keep reading because you're going to get more information and you can never assume. The patient desaturates, and you have decreased breast sounds over the left lung. Okay, now I'm thinking pneumothorax. Now I know we don't have a decreased venous return problem because, well, we do, but now we know the problem is due to the pneumothorax, not due to the inverse ratio ventilation. Okay, so you kind of see how all this plays together, but um, what's going to happen on the vent is going to be something completely different. So chest x-ray, tell they even tell us, like, I thought maybe at this point they're going to ask us, what's the problem? Oh, it's a pneumothorax on the left because I know it's a unilateral problem. If the mechanical ventilation was causing a decreased venous return, well, we wouldn't have a unilateral change in our breath sounds. They would still be bilateral and unchanged. But now we have data and information that's telling us, oh, decreased breath sounds on the left, probably a pneumo. And of course, they tell us chest x-ray shows pneumothorax on the left. Now, Right now, you know that a pneumothorax is going to cause your compliance to go down. So when this patient experienced that pneumothorax, their, their, their pulmonary compliance went down, it decreased. Now in volume control, that will cause your peak inspiratory pressures and your plateau pressures to go up. But we're not in volume control. We're in pressure control. Remember the key to the whole question? We are in pressure control. We're in a mode where we are in control of pressure and we allow volumes to vary in response to changes in compliance and resistance. So in pressure control, your compliance goes down, your exhaled volumes will go down. And that's the answer to this question. So we come down here and we see answer A says that our PIP goes up to 60 and our plat goes up to 60. Well, that's not correct because we're not in volume control. We're controlling pressure. Therefore, pressure is not going to change. So it's not A. I don't even have to read anything else. It's not A. B says PIP goes up to 60 and plat goes up to 60. Don't care. It's not the answer. We're in pressure control. Again, pressure is set. It will not change. Volumes will change. Pressure won't. Okay? So then we look to see and we see that now our PIP is 33. Oh, I like this one already. PIP is 33. Plateau remains 33. Oh, wait. You're telling me, Joe, that with a pneumothorax, your PIP and your plateau doesn't change. I'm telling you in pressure control, it won't change. Because, again, we're controlling pressure. But look what does change. Our tidal volume here went down. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
a decrease in compliance in pressure control will result in pressure staying the same, but a decrease in your exhale tidal volume. And C here is the correct answer. Now D tries to get you, all right? D tries to say PIP 33. Okay, plateau 33, we knew that was gonna be the same. But tidal volume stays the same? That don't, that makes no sense. So I'm not buying that. But rate goes up to 40. Now I know what you're thinking. If a patient had a pneumothorax, they would probably breathe faster, right? Like they would become tachypnic and tachycardic and, and they would breathe faster. So I thought the answer might be D. Well, you would be thinking correctly. But remember what I told you? This respiratory rate of 40? Remember what I told you was going to be a key element in this scenario that's buried in the very first part of it? Your patient's paralyzed. So your patient cannot initiate any inspiratory efforts over the set respiratory rate of 15. So the answer to this question, because of this statement right here, was 100% going to be either A, B, or C. It could not be D. And because of your change in pressures, it couldn't be A or B. It had to be answer C. We got our pressures that stay the same. We have our tidal volume that has gone down and we have a paralyzed patient. Therefore, our rate will stay at 15 and the answer here was C. Now, this question is about a multiple to a multitude of different things. It's about pressure control. It's about pneumothoraxes. So one of the things they might could have asked you is, is well, how would you treat this? Okay, well, because you have hypotension and you have a pneumothorax, all of this is playing together, um, um, describing for you a tension pneumothorax, okay? And you would want to needle decompress between the second and third intercostal spacings midclavicularly or perhaps insert a chest tube, okay? Typically, when they're talking tension pneumo, they're going to needle decompress first. So you got to kind of be on your toes on, you know, where this question is going to take you and, and what you want to do. But for this, what ventilator parameters are going to change? The key is understanding pressure control. Pressure stays the same, volume varies, and the answer is C. Hey guys, I hope this helps. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and please leave me a comment. And if you have an example of a question like this that you would like for me to dissect for you, then put it in an email, send it to respiratorycoach at gmail.com or send it to me through Instagram at respiratorycoach or through TikTok at respiratorycoach. I get them all different ways to try to answer them as quick as I can. But if I get yours, I'll be sure and put it up here and break it down for you. In the meantime, go be great.